I'm excited for today's video sharing some delicious recipes to get you excited to start cooking this fall. And first up is my red pepper orzo recipe. Start with garlic and if I'm gonna roast one head, I might as well roast another. And I love this garlic I buy from Azure Standard. Roasted garlic gives it a depth of flavor versus having a sauteed garlic flavor. So if I'm already roasting my peppers, I'm just gonna roast some garlic with it and the extra head will go into the fridge with a drizzle of olive oil to help preserve it a little bit and I'll use it here real fast. And in the dead of winter, instead of using fresh red peppers, which these are on the small side from my garden, but I will buy jarred roasted red peppers from the grocery store and I end up tending tend to buy the store brand variety versus a name brand because if you take a look at the ingredient list it says yellow number five or red dye and I avoid dyes at all cost and I forgot to show it on camera but I after I roasted the garlic and peppers in the oven on 400 degrees about 30 minutes and then I put it in the blender with a splash of broth and blended it up and I started heating my meat where actually it was leftover braised meat from the next recipe I'm going to share in a little bit. Uh, normally in this recipe I actually use sausage so it's the same profile flavor just a little bit of a different texture and heated that up, added the, added the pepper sauce, three cups of orzo and some broth and I will gently let it gently simmer until it soaks up the broth I'm stirring it because the orzo does tend to stick to the pan and I'm leaving it a little soupy because it will continue to cook and then I finish it off with a little fresh grated parmesan and it's delicious. Next up is that braised pork that I was just talking this about. This has to be one of my favorite winter things to cook is braised meat. Any kind of braised meat. I used pork today, but if you're gonna do it, do it. Do it on the weekend because you want your oven on for five or six hours. I also usually am cooking something else in there, not just the meat. So I am making sure my I'm using my resources well. And also, if you're gonna do this, you might as well do two roasts at once. So you're doubling your time for your effort. And there's so many different ways to use this. This meat is great in tacos or on focaccia sandwiches with little barbecue sauce. And freeze the extras. I made some potato slices uh, cooked in tallow, salt, pepper, garlic. That's my cooking trio and cooked it until they were fried. I was out of orange juice for this recipe, but we do what we can with what we have. So oranges it is, and I fresh squeezed those. I didn't really measure that amount, but it's probably three, three quarters of a cup of orange juice. And then for the meat, so I just use salt, pepper, garlic, cumin, majorum, Marjoram, I'm never sure how to say that seasoning. Make sure to coat all sides with your flavoring so it really soaks into the meat while it cooks down. And also, I would note that if I do roast, I usually break them down, but that bone went through that whole piece of meat, so I didn't break this down into smaller chunks. By breaking it down, it would cook a little bit faster and you would have more tender of meat the longer you cook it and I fried it in some lard because this is a piece of pork so I just use some rendered lard and don't touch the meat let each side get browned and then after all the sides are browned I go ahead and pour in my liquid so I did a I did that orange juice some lime and then I do I think off camera I do add some broth and I don't add a ton of liquid but it will bring its own juices out and I will check on it throughout the process just in case I need to add. And this is what it looked like. I shredded it, took the bones out, put it back in, and while I made, put it back in while I started prepping the potatoes, but all that brown bit on the outside actually wiped right off. It's not burnt into the pan. When you keep the lid on tight, all that heat stays in there and it won't burn the inside. And this night I was making sandwiches, so I made it some homemade fries. And the trick is to slice your potatoes 
put them in cold water to help get some of that starch off and you have to roll them in a towel to get them patted dry and again I'm using some rendered fat to add to my cookie sheets and then just my golden trio of salt pepper and garlic throw the pan in just like this in the oven and the fat will start to melt and the fat will melt in the oven and then you just flip the potatoes around a few times as it cooks on 400 maybe 30 minutes or so until you're until you have the doneness you prefer next up is baked oatmeal and i did pumpkin baked oatmeal to kind of get us in the fall flavors here and i use this beautiful green dish that i got from my grandmother and i will have all these recipes linked linked or in the description i start with about four cups of oats sugar pumpkin salt i use pumpkin pie spice a splash of vanilla baking powder and I a lot of times with baked oatmeal I will use almond milk versus regular milk and this is great a make-ahead meal also that I can prep at night and then it sits in the fridge overnight and then you pop it in if it's a glass pan <laughs> pop the cold glass pan into a cold oven then turn off then turn up the heat and you won't break a glass pan. Ask me how I know. <laughs> but this is easy to whip up. And actually baked oatmeal makes a great snack too. If you just wanted to make it and then cut it into bars. If you did it in a, like a 9 by 13 and maybe you doubled the recipe. Put it in a 9 by 13 and then you can bake it, let it cool and cut it into bars for snacks too. We do that sometimes. Okay, technically this isn't my recipe to share. I will definitely leave the YouTube video in the description for this. It is a Swedish raspberry vanilla bun and it is, it's beautiful looking. It was delicious and I've also made a cardamom cinnamon bun of this also and it worked out wonderfully it's a nice change and they bake and then freeze wonderfully so this makes a big batch and you can pull it out and then kind of refresh it in the oven and you know you can be a beautiful wonderful host this fall and winter and those are the recipes I have for you I recently did a fall homemaking day in the life of a mom of seven that I chat about our children growing up to be teenagers and how life is sometimes not what you want it to be but learning to make the best of it and I'd love for you to check that out and I will see you soon.